I rub my balls on your sword. What's going on everybody and welcome to another episode of Hazard Garage and in today's episode we are going to install the fender flares on the Miata. And in today's episode I really think that this is the best episode that we've ever made. We're gonna be installing the fender flares on the Miata and using no welding because I don't know how to weld. And hopefully at the end of this episode, you'll know how to install your fender flares without having to weld. So let's get into it. All right, now is the time that we are gonna install the wide body fender flares. Pretty nervous for me, I've never done this before, but here's the plan of attack. So the fender flare is mounted up where I want it to be as best as I can get it. And what I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna go ahead and drill the holes for the rib nuts first. So that way, if I need to take it on and off, then I know exactly where it'll line up. And then once that's done, we'll go ahead and we'll outline where the fender sits and probably where I'm gonna end up cutting it. What I'm thinking of doing is, since it's pretty flush, what we're probably gonna do is measure a line about an inch up, and that should give us plenty of clearance for wheel travel, suspension travel, and also not having to cut more material than we need to. So let's get started. So we got our holes drilled for where we want the over fenders to be mounted. And then we went ahead and we measured roughly where we want our cut line to be. And so what we're gonna do here now is we're going to go ahead and we're gonna cut pie cuts, vertical lines up to our cut line. That way when we're cutting across, we don't have to worry about staying straight all the way across a long piece. It's just, you know, we just have to be straight for, you know, a couple inches at a time. And then hopefully that'll give us a little bit of uh, leeway to be able to like, you know, straighten out if we need to straighten out if we're getting a little bit crooked. So let's go ahead and start cutting our vertical lines. All right, so we did our vertical cuts up to our guideline. So now let's go ahead and try to start cutting across and get this bit out. So the fender is cut. I actually really, really like that vertical line pie cut uh, methodology. It actually made it really easy to kind of stay on the line that we outlined. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get the grinding wheel on the angle grinder and just kind of smooth out these edges a little bit. But there it is, pretty much first fender done. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put on a slightly larger drill bit and we're gonna go ahead and enlarge these holes so that we can fit our uh, metal riv nuts in. <laughs> All right, it's on, wheels on, dropped it, everything's bolted in place. All right. 
Hi, <laughs> just kidding. I contacted Carbon Miata who makes these over, uh, over fenders and they confirmed that we mounted them backwards. So we put the rears on the fronts and the fronts on the rears. Luckily, only the fronts were bolted down and in our defense, they actually fit quite well and lined up, but they were incorrect. So we have to do them again. The problem is we already drilled all of the holes and even took a little bit too much of this fender off. So now we are in repair and fix mode. But step one is we're gonna have to remove all the rift nuts that are already in there. And you can see on this fender, I was able to actually drill these out with a drill, just get a bit slightly larger and they popped right out. But on the other side, I've been kind of fiddling around with it. And unfortunately they spin when we start drilling. So we're gonna have to get an angle grinder and actually shave these off. All right, so here's the step one of the process that we're gonna go ahead and use to fill this part where that I cut way too much off of. And we have this, basically this like mesh body patch. And what's this gonna do is it's going to provide us a little bit of a structure so that we can then lay over a Bondo that is fiberglass reinforced. And then that's gonna give us our strength. And then we're gonna go ahead and put a uh, regular Bondo over that. And that's what's gonna give us kind of like our actual uh, body panel back. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut this to size and we're gonna just basically get it in place so that we can lay that uh, fiberglass reinforced Bondo over. All right, so next we're gonna go ahead and try to mix the uh, Bondo Gold Filler. And this is what we're gonna use to actually smooth the panel out. So let's give it a shot. So the Bondo's looking pretty decent. Um, I'm hoping it's good enough. I might need like glazing putty again just to fill in some of the uh, small pinholes. But also what I noticed is that we actually need to cut a little bit more of the fender because now the fender flares sit a little bit higher. So we're gonna go ahead and bust out the angle grinder and chop off a little bit more. All right, so we had to trim a little bit more of the fender, but this is kind of roughly, jacked up the wheel. This is kind of roughly where I'd imagine like full travel might be. Um, so I might actually bring in this part just a tad bit more and then maybe kind of shave down this little tab right here. Um, but overall, it looks like we have plenty of clearance. So we actually didn't get as much clearance as we thought we did. Later on when we were doing some test driving, we noticed that we were getting some rubbing issues and the main culprits were basically here, the front of the fender where it meets the front bumper. That was rubbing just a little bit, so we actually shaved off and grinded a little bit more off of this section and actually got it pretty close to where the stock bumper bolt would go. So we got as close as we could to that and it actually cleared up the, the issues pretty good. The other thing is also this area right here where I kind of messed up and cut too much of the fender off was rubbing as well probably part of it is due to the fact that this is also an aftermarket bumper so fitments like 98% of the way there um, we didn't get any rubbing issues on the side that has the OEM fender also we were getting rubbing issues up here in the fender well areas 
it, it seemed like it was kind of bottoming out and hitting the chassis a bit. So I wouldn't recommend this way, but we, we took a hammer and an angle grinder and we just pounded and shaped the inside of the fender well to, to kind of give us some more clearance. Uh, we also ended up raising the car just a little bit. Uh, to, to prevent it from rubbing. And I've talked to a couple other owners who run 220, this is not like a random tire size, who run 225s uh, with wide body fender flares and they don't really seem to run as to many uh, rubbing issues as I am. And so I'm assuming it's a combination of if I had a higher spring rate for my suspension, so the ground controls that we run are pretty light, probably closer to like 5K in the front. So if you ran something like an 8K, um, you'd probably not experience uh, so much suspension travel and so you probably wouldn't rub. Um, and also just not slamming the car too much and having a proper ride height would probably help as well. That's my guess as to why I'm rubbing and why others are not. But let's continue. So let's go ahead and just make those adjustments right now. So we got the fender flare mounted. Looks good. I am confident that this is the correct way to do it. Uh, the only thing that I noticed is that I don't know if it's the quality of the rib nuts that we have or the quality of the bolts, but just be cautious that when you're actually doing this, that the angle of the fender actually matters. Um, I noticed, especially with this one, that if I didn't screw it in at the right angle that it was drilled, that the, uh, the bolt wasn't lining up properly. It wasn't threading in, but everything's in. It looks good, so we're gonna go ahead and do the driver's side and hopefully it goes well. Yay, we got the driver's side fender flares mounted up. That one actually went out without a problem. Everything screwed in a lot better. Don't know why, but I'm glad it is in there. So that may that means basically the fronts are mounted. They're done. Now we just gotta move on to the rears, which is the part I'm scared about, but I'm feeling good. Let's ride this momentum and keep on going. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start on the rear fender flares. We're gonna go ahead and use the same process that we did for the fronts, cause uh, definitely by now we have a lot of practice with it. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna drill our, just kind of like our pilot holes for where it's gonna be mounted. And then we're just gonna measure the distance that we want to cut up and we're gonna do the pie cuts and then go across. Um, so hopefully that goes smoothly. So let's give it a shot.
Okay, so we got the initial cut in. Looks pretty good. It's a little difficult because there are certain areas that are a little bit thick that the angle grinder couldn't quite get all the way into, but we were able to get it cut out pretty evenly. You can see here that what's different from the front and the rear is that there's this inner fender well that's actually metal as well, as opposed to just being like a plastic liner. And so the plan is you have to kind of seal this so that water obviously doesn't go up behind the uh, panel. So what we're gonna try, since I don't know how to weld yet, is we're gonna try either JB weld, like traditional JB weld epoxy, or we're gonna try to use the steel weld, which is like a JB weld like putty. Uh, since this isn't really isn't like a high stress point, I think the putty would be easier and should be able to work to seal up the rear quarter panel. So I got some, we're gonna go give it a shot and see how well it does. So we started putting the steel weld putty to seal up the rear quarter panel. And I kind of like it so far. Uh, reason being is that it takes only a few minutes for this to actually harden as opposed to like real JB weld that takes about like an hour or so before it actually hardens. Uh, the only thing is that there are some little gaps here. Um, so it probably is gonna take a couple of tubes to do one side. So I'm gonna just go ahead and get another small section of putty and then fill in these holes that are left here and then just kind of continue all the way down until it's sealed. But I, I do like how quick it, it hardens and so it's a little bit easier to work with. All right, so here's a little bit of a close up of how we are sealing the uh, rear quarter panel. So we're using steel weld, JB welds like putty. Essentially what you do is you just kind of need this like Play-Doh like substance and we are using it to fill in these kind of like openings between the uh, fender liner and the rear quarter panel. And after we use this putty, we'll go ahead and we'll kind of like fill in all the cracks that get left with a uh, quick weld. And that should seal our rear quarter panel from any moisture getting in behind it. Um, I 
I want to say about two sticks of putty per side will get you done and one small package of the quick weld to kind of seal the rest of the, the cracks up. So just in case you're trying to do something uh, like this without any welding, you just need about four for the entire car, four sticks of uh, putty, and then one container of, or one small little like tube container of the quick weld. So let's go ahead and just finish up this side and we'll also get the quick weld on there to fill in the rest of the cracks. So we went ahead and we covered all the cracks and seams that we can find that the putty didn't quite get with the JB Weld Quick Weld. So everything should be all sealed up pretty good. And now we'll go ahead and we'll just let this dry before mounting the fender flares and getting every set up. that's going to go ahead and do it for today's episode. We did a lot of work and we got the fender flares mounted and they look good, even though we had to do them twice. But we learned a lot on the way, so hopefully you were able to pick up a few tips on how to install fender flares on your Miata or your any other car in general. So if you want to keep following the journey and the project build on the Miata, make sure to subscribe and let us know what you think of the build so far and any other comments on our technique or any tips that you may have in the comments below. Thanks for watching.